Our next little grouping of application layer services all relate to email related services. Some are for email servers, some are for email clients. Let's take a closer look. And as we take a look at email related applications, I want to help reinforce the idea that when we're talking about the TCP IP protocol stack and we say the word apps, we're talking about application layer services. We're not talking about maybe running a word processor on a computer or even an email client on a PC. We may be using an email client, which behind the scenes is leveraging email related apps from the TCP IP protocol suite. But every time we're talking about networking and applications, we're referring to application layer services up here in the protocol stack. So let's start off a few, and I'm going to put these in red because they are not secure. <laughs> like, stop, don't use these. SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and that uses by default TCP port number 25. And we use SMTP for a variety of flavors. Uh, a PC can use SMTP to send messages to their email server. Uh, one email server, like at our company, could send messages to another email server via SMTP. And if a server is running SMTP, they're going to be listening on TCP port 25. And that way when a request comes in, there can be de-encapsulation and the SMTP server can do its job. And because we want to do things securely, instead of using the insecure flavor of SMTP, we can use SMTP TLS. Which TLS, if that sounds familiar, like transport layer security, that's because it is. We're going to leverage the transport layer security that we use with HTTPS. And we can also use it with simple mail transfer protocol. And the default port for that is TCP 587. So let's imagine that we have an email server that's interacting with the rest of the world and these clients want to retrieve their email from that server. What protocols can we use for that? There's specific application layer services that provide that functionality. And the application layer service, one of them that can provide that functionality is post office protocol version three. We just call it POP3 and the default well-known port for POP3 services is TCP port 110. Now it's in red, <laughs> which implies bad news. So instead, we're very likely to use POP3 over SSL, which uses TCP port 995. So right here it says POP3 over SSL. Uh, as far as the naming goes, whenever we see the term SSL, it refers to that type of technology to encrypt a session. However, it's very likely behind the scenes really using transport layer security, which is like the next edition or better version that does the same functions of SSL, but with less security flaws. Now, POP3 isn't the only application layer service for clients that they can use to retrieve their email. They could also use IMAP, which is another email protocol that a client application, where the computer running a program like an email client would leverage this IMAP application layer service as it interacts with the server to retrieve mail. And IMAP is TCP port 143. And it's in red, <laughs> which implies danger, Will Robinson, danger. So the secure option would be IMAP over SSL once again. So POP3 and IMAP both leveraging SSL and the well-known port for that feature is TCP port 993. Now, one of the questions that may come up is, Keith, do we need to memorize all these well-known ports? Now, literally there are, you know, thousands and thousands of application layer services and we don't need to memorize all those ports, but the ones I'm sharing with you in this set of videos, the most common application layer services out there, I would recommend you commit these to memory. And that way, as you're working in networks and working with these application layer services, you can be familiar with what the well-known ports are in the event you need to filter them or forward them or treat them differently on the network. So again, it's good to be aware of what the default ports are for these application layer services related to email. And again, over here on the left, I put the insecure application layer services in their default ports. And over here on the right, I put the secure flavors of those with their default ports. And also, you know, another benefit of knowing these ports is that if we're looking at log files, if we're looking for insecure protocols, like looking for SMTP or POP3, even if we don't have a next generation firewall, we can still look for, are these ports being used? Do we have TCP 110 being used and TCP 143 being used and TCP 25 being used? And if we do, we would want to look into that and replace those with their secure counterparts. In fact, I'm curious on the network I'm currently sitting at, let me take a look and see whether or not these protocols show up in the logs on my network device that's paying attention to all the traffic that's going through. So I've actually got a couple firewalls with lots of logs. So if I don't find them on one, I can probably find it on the other. So as a quick check, I'm gonna click on monitor and over on the left, I'm gonna click on the traffic logs, which is just keeping track 
of the traffic that this device has seen. I also have a filter in place up here, <laughs> which is only showing me traffic matching uh, destination port equals 445. Let me go ahead and clear that filter off. By clicking the X, that'll refresh. And so here in this output, I've got a column regarding ports involved. Let me go ahead and just click one. Now I know 53 is DNS, uh, but let's go ahead and specify port 25. And that will tell us <laughs> in the logs if there's any traffic that this device has seen destined to port 25, and that would be for TCP or UDP. Oh, good, nothing. All right, so no SMTP naked. So insecure SMTP is not being used. Let's try the secure equivalent, which is port 587. So I'll replace that value with 587, press enter. Yeah, sure enough, look at that. So I've got traffic from this device going to that device, and it's running 587. So that's an example of the secure flavor of SMTP using a destination port of 587. Fantastic, let me try POP3. POP3 is 110. I'm just typing in 110, pressing enter. All right, I've got no insecure POP3. So let's go ahead and do the IMAP, the insecure flavor, which is the destination TCP port of 143. Oh, look, I've got one here. Hmm, <laughs> but it timed out. So I at least had something that tried to use IMAP, but it's not the secure flavor, so I wouldn't wanna to see too much of that. And let's try the secure flavor of IMAP, which is IMAP over SSL, which is port 993. Press enter. All right, fantastic. So there we have TCP going to 993, and this firewall is also identifying that as a mail-based application. So this protocol and port are the protocol and port associated with IMAP over SSL. So the takeaways from this video are that these traditional email-related protocols have some well-known ports, but we shouldn't be using them because they are insecure, meaning they don't have a security complex. They rather have insecurities in how they operate. They don't encrypt the data. We want to use the secure equivalents, and we want to be aware of the default server ports for all these in the event we need to either permit or deny that type of traffic on the network. And here's one more reason why we would want to memorize these ports. If we didn't want to allow POP3, the insecure flavor, we could in our network filter and stop any traffic destined for TCP 110. And that would prevent those individuals who are trying to use POP3, that would prevent that traffic from being forwarded over the network. Another grouping of application layer services are application layer services that let us remotely connect to another device, whether it's a command line interface with text or a graphical user interface. In the next video, I'd like to chat with you about a few popular and very prevalent application layer services that let us do exactly that. I'll see you in just a moment.